Eventually, the police started to focus their attention on a man named Barry George. He lived about a half mile away from Jill's house. Barry had a criminal history which made him appear to be a good suspect. According to the police, he had been in trouble for posing as a police officer, offenses of a sexual nature, and stalking. The police obtained a search warrant for his house. They found maps containing the locations of women, an empty holster for a firearm. A photograph was found of Barry holding a pistol, which was consistent with the one that the police believed was used in the murder. And they seized a dark, three-quarter length coat. Inside the pocket of this coat, the police found a single particle of gunshot residue. It matched the gunshot residue found on Jill's hair and on the spent case. When Barry was interviewed about his whereabouts, he changed his story. Witnesses placed Barry near Jill's house about four hours before the murder. Barry George was arrested on May 25, 2000 and charged with murder three days later. His trial took place in the summer of 2001. He was convicted on July 2 and sentenced to life in prison. He unsuccessfully appealed twice. His third appeal, however, was successful. His conviction was overturned. He was tried for a second time, but this time the gunshot residue particle was excluded as evidence. On August 1, 2008, he was found not guilty. At the time making this video, the murder of Jill Dando remains unsolved, although many people believe that Barry George was guilty in reality. There is not much hope that this case will be solved in the future. Now moving to my analysis. Let's take a look at the theories about what happened in this case. Theory number one is that Barry George was guilty despite his acquittal. Just because someone is found not guilty in a court of law doesn't mean they are necessarily innocent of the offense. Barry lived nearby. He had a history of criminality involving women, was spotted in the area four hours before the murder, attempted to fabricate an alibi, and had a single particle of gunshot residue in the inside pocket of his coat. The problem with this theory is that the particle could have been transferred in a number of ways. It did not necessarily get in his coat pocket by him placing a pistol in there. In addition, even if he did put a handgun in his pocket, that doesn't mean that he used that handgun to kill anybody. You know, being a, I wouldn't really want to dwell too much on when I was a gangster. Uh, life has been a gangster. I don't really like, I'm not really proud of it, really, to be honest with you. I'm not really proud of that. Because, uh, you know, looking back on it, I think to myself, you know, you know, being gangster life is not, it's not, it's not something I want to glamorize. And uh, time in jail, you know, <laughs> bro, you know, there were stories which I've told you, like stories of the time of jail and some funny stories in jail. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Guys, you know, something I don't really be proud of myself either. I'm not proud of going to jail, to be honest with you. I went to jail and I was not proud of it. It's almost hell is thing on earth. Um, you know, um...